Uh, I've, yes. read, I've read mm. that article by uh, Philip Pickett with, uh, with the whole allegory of, of this. Yes. The, three, the, 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 oh, the yes. three quick and the three dead being part of... of yes, the, yes. Yes, I, I, I mean, I, it's, it's, I don't think it's wrong to, to seek that kind of symbolism in Bach because he's full of it in, in mm. other places. I, I, mm. but, um, but to me, in this particular one, mm. I don't think there's a symbolism in the use of the vials. I think it's simply that he wants um, a consult sound which is going to sound good. And uh, here, having the um, bass vials in there just lightens that uh, texture. That I think the, uh, the, the, the vials do is they encourage a kind of certain resonance out of the other instruments as well, not only in the, um, mm. uh, in the, uh, the fact that the other instruments have got to sort of make way for them a little bit. You can't, uh, the viol has always been a softer instrument than the violin family. The bass mm. viol is so, so softer than the cello and so on and so forth. So people have got to make you, you know, a, a, a certain level of balance is imposed by using viols. Whereas if you have four cellos, um, everybody can just let rip. There's no, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a, it just encourages mm. the wrong kind of approach. Even with Baroque cellos, I think it would be the case. Mm. Um, so I think your idea of having violas there and retuned violas mm. actually does fulfill that obligation, I think it's a very mm. creative idea. The, the other thing that the viols do is that if you play a B-flat major note on a viol, you also automatically finger the B-flat major chord as well, because it, it, it falls very easily under the fingers. Mm. So when you're going jum, 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 jum along here on the viol, or whatever you, where you're doing, um, in these things here, you, you've got, uh, there's, there's almost a sort of, um, uh, the, the that there's a kind of resonance from the within the instrument, and that I think brings something out in the surrounding instruments. So you say you place the chord with the left hand, yes, even yes. though you're only playing the single note. Yes, yes, that? yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Because you and you get all these sympathetic vibrations. I mean, the yeah. function of the frets, apart from showing you where to put your fingers, which actually they're not much help in that. Mm. <laughs> but the because um, if you don't know where to put your fingers anyway, the frets aren't going to help. But the but what they do is they give a kind of open string tone to every mm. every note, and so you can hold a B flat down and bow it, and then your bow leaves it and bow something else. But that B flat can go on yes. sounding, and the um, and that brings uh, that's why I was sort of thinking that on those chords you want to go for resonance mm. rather than accents or you know. To, and use as little vibrato as possible and so on and so forth, so that the actual resonance of the chord is what you mm. hear. And I think that's the contribution of the vials mm. to this. Yeah. I think that's what it is. And, and considering that the, that the viola or the cello would be a, a C major instrument, typically. Yes. Yeah. So your open strings wouldn't help you in, in, yeah. in this sort of work, whereas yeah. if you, you know, with, with, the, with the substitution with B flat and F uh, with the two B flat strings and two F strings. Yeah. At least for some of the time, you would have a little bit more yes. of the resonances for, for, for the chords, which are important. It doesn't sound, I mean, the retuned viola doesn't sound like a gamba. Um, not that I think it should necessarily try. I mean, I think the, um, uh, the aim is to produce a, a, something of artistic beauty rather than something which is re a replication of mm -hmm. something else, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So I think the, um, uh, you, you, I think the, the the basic function of the of the um, of the of the violas, quasi gambas, in here is to is to gain that kind of resonance, and then where they've got these little uh, moments of melodic significance, which crop up sort of unexpectedly and and, and, and are really significant when they come, mm -hmm. um, then they they can come out of the texture. It's less about how closely the sound approximates the sound of the, the tomba of the viola da gamba, mm. but how much it fills the same role that the, yeah. the viola da gamba is meant to play in this yeah. in this action, because obviously mm. a, a different work with far bigger range of, of, of things which the, the gamba can do, that yes. there's no point in trying to, to fully... Um, no, I agree totally. There's no point in trying to, to, as it were, imitate, but you can take your cue from it, that's mm. and that I think that's what you've been doing. And the, um, and the to me, that what it does is, is just lightens the sort of texture enormously. It's um, I think with four cello or three cellos, you and a double bass, you really have got to um, you've got to work quite hard against the nature of the instrument in a way. Mm. Whereas I think it's easier with the viola perhaps mm. to, um, to to achieve the sort of result. The it's been very interesting to mm. me with those sort of five-part fugue things in the first movement when you're doing it with the cellos. Yeah. The violas are trying to compete with the yes. cellos, <laughs> whereas in this version you're actually playing down to accommodate yes. the, the yeah. softer sound of the retuned violas. Mm. So it's quite a different thing for the solo violas. And I imagine that's mm. what would happen as well when oh, gambas yes. would yes, be... Yes, yes, yes. Because, uh, I mean, a, a Baroque viola 
or Barocello always outspeaks or can outspeak a, 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 a Viola de Gamba lead. <laughs> Certainly, this is the lightest instrumentation of any mm. of, of all the Brandenburgs. Mm. You've done them all mm. as, a, as, a, right. as, as a group, which, mm. Mm. Um, and uh, the, I imagine that did, when when you did them, did you do these with an orchestra? With three cellos. Three cellos. Yeah. 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 This is the first time I've been working in a group where there's been four violas. I've yeah. seen it done, yes. but it's the first time I've actually worked with a group with the four violas, and certainly the first time with two retuned violas. Yes, yes. <laughs> so there's a, a lot of compromise with normal tuning, with dropping up, up an octave and dropping yes. the bottom octave out at times. Yes. Donald, this, uh, this arrangement that we had is in part based, uh, is connected to your double squadratura for Bach's Fifth Suite. And, mm. uh, I mean, how's your experience been with that retuned instrument as well? Well, that, as you know, the reasons I have explored that retuning is for two reasons. Mm. One is for the resonance of the instrument. I found with a fifth, a fourth, and a fifth that there was a, an incredibly supportive resonance across the four strings, mm. whereas with Bach's instruction to go fifth, fifth, and a fourth mm. with a D string at D, it wasn't quite as resonant. By, so by dropping a D string also down, the instrument suddenly became much more resonant. But that was almost a byproduct of the real reason. Um, the real reason I did that was really to show the voicing of bass, tenor, alto, soprano, using the strings for each of those voices in that suite, and especially in movements like the fugue, mm. where you had to keep crossing on to the next string when you didn't want that voice yet. Mm. And by going to that scoratura, it suddenly exposed the voicing of the fugue mm -hmm. and the other movements. And as I said, the, the, the resonance was a byproduct. Yeah. Thank and you for letting me use your byproduct. <laughs> and what you've done in here has taken it to, to a much further degree. You, you've created a completely different tuning, yeah. especially listening, how is this affecting the voicing. Mm. And there have been some quite remarkable things that have come out because of the retuning, where I'm hearing the voices actually on the strings I want to hear them on. Ah, I mm. see. I and that's really interesting to follow a line through, and, and like in the fugue entries and so on. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there has been a benefit with this retuning mm. simply for voicings on strings. <laughs>
I mean, if, if people with, with modern instruments were not allowed as such, you know, <laughs> yes. to, to play yeah. works of yeah. the period, then, then uh, well, of course I, I think Park would yeah. be quite, you know, I, I think he would be quite unhappy with that. that oh, absolutely, of. yes. <laughs> and I might say I would be too. I mean, I think a great music belongs to whoever wants to play it on whatever <laughs> instruments they want to play it. So nobody can possess it. But there was a time... Um, when it was seen to be a, a, a kind of moral issue, and, and I think that's, you know, the, I think it's a very, I'm very glad that time has largely passed. Um, of but, course, but, but isn't that the critical point is is that no matter what instruments you use, is to use it with uh, keeping in mind what, what he had in mind. At least. Yeah, yes, yes, absolutely, and that, and that's a big question. I mean, as the questions that you never see stop asking. You know, it's, that's why it's so wonderful to actually sit and just look at the um, what he wrote. Mm. That's his message to posterity, um, and everything that he can tell us is in there somewhere. Um, and the, the instruments um, can also give the same kind of sense, but. Um, I, I, I mean, really, my mantra is a little bit like what you've just been saying. It's not what you play, it's how you play it. It's, it's possible to find um, a way to make this a beautiful, wonderful musical experience um, you know, on, on almost any com combination of instruments, provided that you go about it in the right way. And it may mean that with modern instruments, if you play it with, with three cellos and double bass and two violas, that the cellos have really got to, to sort of hold themselves back and, and not, as it were, let the nature of the instrument take over. And that's a, that's a bit of a handicap mm. always. So Which hopefully is not as much a handicap now. Well, I thought with the retuned violas it was much less of a handicap and they actually need to come out more. They need mm. to recognise where they've got to s actually step forward and, and really take over in the, in, the, um, in the texture. And they have small numbers. I mean, you're asking me about my... Um, my experience. My experience was that it was it, it was precisely that. Really, you sit, sit back and you, as it were, provide the resonance for the for the con concertizing violas on the top, and then every now and then you step up and, and join them, and you, and that's a nice chance to sort of really step out and then back mm. again. I want to ask one, one final question to you, and that is with this mm. arrangement of performing in the round, and mm. I'm imagining an audience being completely around you and mm -hmm. you're in the middle. Um, it, what's the experience like? Because you're actually looking across to each other inwardly, mm. whereas normally one, you have your back to half the players when you're playing the solo mm. viola, and, and I'm just wondering what the experience is as a performer to be performing into the middle with visual right. contact with every member of the group. Right. Well, I mean, I, I find it, it, it coming back to, to this uh, to this point that a lot of things that we do happen very nicely by accident. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, the, the the primary reason why we were doing that is simply because we had the, the lid off the harpsichord, and it, the sound wasn't going in a very directional way, and so, you know, we put ourselves in this order. Nothing really to do with the research to begin with. But then when I went back and I reread my paper and then I looked particularly at the fugues, and to see that going in a, in a perfect circle, mm. I realized that we even have limitations with paper that the fugues don't look like they sound. They jump across mm -hmm. from the bottom to the top when that's not really what's intended as far as the, the, the concept of what a fugue is. So um, I, I'm glad that uh, we, we found that arrangement by accident that matches uh, that, that demonstrates, hopefully, I mean, I think, I think that's a, a big part of the lecture recital is that I hope that it demonstrates some of the things which are evident in the mm. score and that this message comes across that mm. when Bach said that we want to see the circular movement of sound, that we can actually mm. both hear that and see that. Mm. I, I found mm. it interesting, too, with the rearrangement of mm. how you're standing, that you've got yes, yes, so you've a, a viola yeah. and a gamba, yeah. viola and a gamba, which yeah. works great in the first move because of that five-part fugue rotating around. Yes, but then yes. in the last movement, mm. it's much better to pair the other yes, way. Yes, and I think yes, it's actually mm. quite interesting in the middle of the performance to, to move. Yes, yes, I thought that, I thought that was quite right. courageous, and yes, it works. Yes, yeah. I thought it did. Yeah. But also, if you, look, if you look at pictures of people playing, you'll find they have this kind of arrangement. Mm. We, I mean, when we played it, we played it this kind of arrangement. Oh, really? Yes, mm. um, with the audience out I, there. I, and I mean, it, it, yeah. when, when you're listening, when you're sitting out there listening to it, mm. which of course I hadn't done, uh, I'd only played it, um, when you're actually sitting listening to it, it's totally congruous. It doesn't seem, it, it, there's nothing that looks wrong. In fact, mm. it's the opposite. It looks, you can, everybody's got kind of eye contact. Mm. And the harpsichord has got his back to everybody, but he's the kind of mm. rhythmic focus of the whole thing. It just looks absolutely right. Mm.